here. Do you, do you agree with what he's saying about women? <laughs> Everybody agree? You have a question? Um, I was just wondering, could you give us a demonstration? Like, could you pick up? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, I, can, I mean, I, I, obviously, this is uh, would be a contrived situation, but I can t uh, show you if you want um, what what I teach. Obviously, this is simply a, like a, a demonstration. <laughs> um, can we borrow these two lovely ladies over here? <laughs> But the idea is, um, there, there, there are two major components of any kind of approach. There's your, you know, what's actually coming out of your mouth and what you physically are doing. Um, that's what we'll teach. Like we'll, like I'm flying out one of my um, homegirls uh, from from LA to New York because you know it's it's easier for guys to to approach you know a girl than pretend that you know I'm a girl. So, um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll practice that. And then I go off to go. You know the uh, the proper way to you know or touch you know doing in a friendly and in a non creepy manner, um, all that kind of stuff, and then what to say. So does it matter where you are? Does the context matter? Yes. Um. Obviously, in a bar or club or in a nightlife setting, you can get away with a lot more stuff. I guess. You could say. <laughs> <laughs> um. In in the <coughs> daytime, obviously things are slower. Things are more low key. And it's not like you're, you're gonna grab the girl and dance her out in the middle of like Starbucks or anything. <laughs> but the premise is still the same. It's, um, it's like when you do a job interview. They, they, I read studies where, <clears throat> um, they're shown people are shown uh, a videotape of of these people who are doing interviews and they turn off the sound, and people can look and just simply see uh, who who's going to going to get the job. You know, without even listening to the words, things like that, and it's like the confidence of your handshake, right? Um, you know, whether or not you smile, how you address the person, all these kind of factors come into play. Mm -hmm. um, what's your most memorable pickup? <laughs> most memorable. <laughs> oh, see, this is this is a part as a public figure now. Girls go Google me. Um, no, I've been. I remember I was in like Australia. And I told the girl that I was there for like a dating conference because I was being interviewed by the TV. I was then flown out there to <coughs> speak, and she was like the singer at my hotel. And we started like kind of dating while I was there, and we we're like in the park and we we're like canoodling, kissing. She says, "Oh, by the way, I've seen your YouTube videos." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm, "What'd you think?" <laughs> and she was cool though. But this is uh, one of the things that it's, it's um, you know regaling my my conquests is. Uh, is a touch going to be a touchy subject nowadays? And you know, girls do do like look up my blog and and go on YouTube. So I, I you know, I think it would be unfair to them. Okay. So what do your parents know about? <laughs> 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 my parents. Uh, my um, you know, my mom knows on a, a kind of vague conceptual level. <laughs> she does. She you know, it's like a don't ask, don't tell, right? <laughs> now she. You know, doesn't want to know the the details, um, but she appreciates. She likes the fact that I am like successful and you know important. Um, in that regard. So you know who you know who who can brag about their son being on TV and speaking at Ivy League colleges and traveling the world and stuff like that. So you know, let's give a chance. To yeah. Um, so you talked a little bit about the difficulties of Asian guys in the dating game and the business game. So why do you think those difficulties still persist in modern America? Um, this is a very complex subject. I've actually like you know made like it's this this free download um, when it comes to uh, Asians and the cultural conflicts. Part of it is the social isolation effect. If anybody who's had like so the equivalent of the tiger mom or the tiger dad, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it it's you know my my mom was very strict. Um, I, if I, you know, I was like whipped, or, you know, got like, switched if I, I got like a B or C, um, and you know, there's that kind of pressure. And we, our parents, spend so much time 
uh, putting us or training us on the, the, those things that are meant for pure like social survival, like the son, the daughter, whatever, has to get a good college education, um, uh, and those things that will provide support. Because our family, I mean, you have to realize our family's, you know, in a strange land. Took took a massive uh, risk coming here, and you know, maybe they barely speak the language, and so they're just, you know, concentrating on what we get, what they need to do just simply to survive, all right? And that, you know, one of the surest ways to success, financial success, is just paying attention to your grades, you know, getting that good job, getting the car, getting the house, and by the time you're 26 and you're still a virgin, then they'll set you up with a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, part of it is obviously the, the media plays a part, the negative perceptions, um, like the Green Hornet, right? You know, you got J2, who is like this massive superstar over in China, but he doesn't even kiss Cameron Diaz because apparently Cameron Diaz didn't want to kiss J2. I mean, it's like, in, he's supposed to be like, you know, the sidekick hero. Um, or like, you know, the worst <coughs> way, that was like, but the, the first movie of like last year where you see like an Asian actor actually kiss a white girl. I, it's of the entire year or something like that. Um, so a lot of social perception in the media plays a part. A lot of things that we do mentally to ourselves, the idea like, oh, I should not talk to a girl because that's going to come off as creepy. Um, I mean, it's a very multifaceted, very complex discussion. Um, one, I mean, I enjoy talking about it, but one thing I learned, you know, was the more you talk about a negative subject, the more it's going to bring you down. At a certain point, you know, I used to be those, like, the, the angry Asian man, like, the bitter Asian man, right? <laughs> like, all that kind of political activism, like, yeah, you know, it's the media, it's the media. Um, <laughs> and then the, the more you talk about the more it brings down your own confidence, you know? I, I would tell the guys, the only thing that you are 100% sure of accomplishing is what you do. Right. You can't change what other people think. You can't change what, what other people do. You can only control yourself and what you do now and what you do tomorrow. Is there such thing as a girl who can't be picked up? Yes. Um, I'm not going to be that kind of guy that's like, oh, if you have enough game, you you know, you know can pick up anyone. Like <laughs> the the uh, exaggerated example, I cannot, you know, no one can go into a Ku Klux Klan rally and pick up that that. that a blonde clan member. <laughs> um, I think, though, it's the idea of, of not putting limits to, your, to yourself because you don't know what your limit is. You don't know what the edge of the boundary is until you step off. So, you know, trying finding things that you can't do, or it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy, this, this loop in your mind that, you know, if this barrier is there, there must be other barriers. And then you just you know, bring in more and more and more, and then you just become the kind of guy it, that goes from there's that one girl that can, no one could ever pick up to. I can't pick up any girls at all.